introducing permutations and factorials, we're at 13.1b. If you missed 13.1a, it's linked in the description along with the geometry playlist. Now for those of you who stumbled upon this video, this is high school geometry, so we're not going to be getting too deep into this topic. But if you check the description, there's going to be a link to the Chapter 15 videos from Algebra 2, all about counting and probability, and it's going to talk about circular permutations, and it'll even get into the binomial theorem and stuff like that. A permutation is a selection of a group of objects in which the order is important. If we have a set of three objects like this ABC in the set braces, we can find how many ways they can be arranged by using the fundamental counting principle or a tree diagram like we did in the last video, 13.1a. Now, if we only had one thing in the set, an A, there's only one way to arrange one item, so that would be one permutation. But there are two ways to arrange two items. We could put, for A and B, we could put the A first and then the B, or we could put the B first and then the A. That's two times one, which equals two permutations. If we had three items, A, B, C, there are six ways to arrange these three items. We can arrange it as the C first and then the A, B. We could put the C in between the A and B, and we can put the C at the end. We can also, for B, A, put the C in the front, put it in between, or put it at the end. So that's three times two times one, which is six permutations. One, two, three, four, five, six permutations. So, for the number of permutations for three items is three times two times one, we can extend this to permutations of n items, some amount we don't know, some number n items, which would be that number n times one less than n, then two less than n, then three less than n, until we got to one. So, example, if we had five items, then the five would be the n, then n minus 1 would be a 4, n minus 2 would be a 3, n minus 3 would be a 2, and we would do this subtracting another one until we got to a 1. So we would have, for 5 items, 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, which equals 120 permutations. This one is 1 less than 5, this one is 2 less than 5, see? This one is 3 less than 5, we multiply them together, we get the number of permutations. If we had nine items, we would do nine times eight times seven times six times five, all the way down to times one. If we had a hundred items, we would do 100 times 99 times 98 times 97 times 96, and so on, all the way down to one. So, this expression is called n factorial. And it's written as an N with an exclamation point. Yep, we have exclamation points in math. So we read this as N factorial, and it's written as an N with an exclamation point. And the permutations of four items would be four factorial. It would be four times three times two times one, slowly getting down to one, which would equal 24 permutations. So four factorial is equal to 24. So for your notes about n factorial, that would be for any whole number n, we have a definition. The factorial of a number is the product of the natural numbers less than or equal to the number. And zero factorial is defined as a one. We're going to talk about that more in a second. So for example, five factorial would be five times four times three times two times one. That would equal 120. Five times four is 20. 20 times 3 is 60, 60 times 2 is 120, which really by the time you get to this one you know what the answer is because multiplying anything by 1, identity property says it's going to be that number. So we know it's 120. In algebra, whatever the number is factorial, n factorial, it would be that number times that number minus 1 times that number minus 2 times that number minus 3 until we got to 1. 
So 0 factorial is equal to 1 because 0 items arranged in 0 ways can only be arranged in one way as an empty set. So if you think of it that way, it'll make sense to you. There's only one way to arrange zero things, and that's as an empty set. So it equals one. One factorial is equal to one. Two factorial is two times one, that's equal to two. Three factorial would be three times two times one, that's six. Four factorial, that's four times three times two times one. So you see what's happening here? Five factorial is five times four times three times two times one. 6 factorial starts with the 6 and then slowly goes down to 1 and we could do 7 factorial, 8 factorial, a million factorial. Generally, these first several ones are memorized by a lot of mathematicians and they just know that 4 factorial equals 24 because they've done it so many times or 3 factorial is a 6. They just memorize them like they memorized the times table. Now, sometimes we may not want to put an entire set of items in order. If we have a group of seven people, but only want to choose and order three of them, we can use the fundamental counting principle. It's almost like when you are choosing teams for a baseball game. You have two team leaders, and they say, okay, I choose this person, and then the other team leader says, I choose that person, and every time they choose, the group of people to choose from becomes one smaller. So the first person, when you, they choose, you have seven people to choose from. They're all there. By the time you choose your second person, there's only six remaining to choose from. And when you choose the third person, there's only five remaining to choose from. So we have seven times six times five. That would be 210 permutations. Another way to find the possible permutations is to use factorials. We can divide the total number of arrangements by the number of arrangements that are not used. So we had seven people and we were choosing three, so four don't matter. We're not going to choose four of them. What we do is we put the arrangements of seven people over the arrangements of the four that we're not choosing. That's going to give us a seven factorial over a four factorial. That's going to be 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 over 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. These 4s cancel out as a 1, these 3s cancel out as a 1, the 2s, the 1s cancel out as a 1, and all we're left with is 7 times 6 times 5, which is 210. 7 times 6 is 42 times 5 is 210. This can be generalized as a formula, which is useful when we have a large number of items. So again, for your notes about permutations, the number of permutations of seven items, those seven people, taken three at a time would be 7p3. This is the number of permutations, the p, of seven objects taken three at a time. We would write it as 7 factorial over 7 minus 3 factorial. See, we do 7 minus 3. That means we have 7 factorial over 4 factorial. For algebra, it would be the number of permutations of n items taken r at a time. We would have n factorial over that number n minus r factorial. This n is the number of items, and the r is how many taken at a time. We do the n minus the r, and we get that factorial, and then we can do some canceling out. So, let's say there's 12 flavors of ice cream to choose from. How many different ways can we arrange three of the flavors for a triple scoop cone? We got 12 to choose from, but the cone is going to be a triple scoop, so we're only going to put three of the flavors here. But there's 12 flavors. So we have 12 P3. That's going to be 12 factorial over 12 minus 3 factorial. We're going to subtract the 3 from the 12. 
12 factorial over 9 factorial. We write the 12 times 11 times 10 times 9, etc., all the way down to 1. And we do the 9 factorial, starting with 9, going all the way down to 1. And these all cancel each other out as 1s, don't they? And we're left with 12 times 11 times 10. That means there are 1,320 different ways we can arrange the ice cream to make a triple scoop cone if there's 12 flavors. Here's just two of them. But there's 1,320 different ways we can arrange the ice cream to make a triple scoop cone. The next part of this lesson is going to be about combinations, and then we're going to finish it up with relative area before moving on to 13.2, which is going to be about theoretical, geometrical, and experimental probability. So, a permutation of a set is an ordered arrangement of that set without repetition. We can find the number of permutations by using factorials. Now you know what the exclamation point is. Have a great day, and I'll see you for the rest of the lesson. Bye.